Five Nights at Freddy's, a name that sends shivers down your spine and nostalgia through your veins. It's a franchise that's been popular for years, and now with the new film, it's about to claw its way into pop culture for even longer. But fellow LEGO enthusiasts, have you ever wondered what it would be like to bring the terror of Freddy Fazer's pizza to life? Brick by brick? As a diehard LEGO fan, I've always believed the FNAF would make the perfect LEGO set. Not a theme, but a set of the pizzeria that's just dripping with potential. And the thing is, we've even seen them make sets based on franchises with graphic violence and adult themes, so why not Five Nights at Freddy's? Sadly, LEGO doesn't share my vision because they've always been against the idea of embracing the FNAF franchise. They've shut down LEGO idea submissions and they even squashed a LEGO FNAF fan game. But fear not, because there's one company that recognized the treasure trove that FNAF could bring to the construction toys and took the risk. This is the tale of McFarlane Toys' Fight Nights at Freddy's construction line. Back in 2015, McFarlane made a bold move into the construction toy market, an arena that had been dominated by LEGO for over 60 years. McFarlane Toys, founded by the daring Todd McFarlane, was no stranger to pushing boundaries. Years earlier, they popularized the modern adult collectible, and they recognized the lack of horror products in the construction toy market. And so, they decided to create it. Their journey began with the Walking Dead buildable sets, which were mostly aimed to teenagers, but the fact of the matter is, to thrive in the toy market, you must cater to kids. And that's where FNAF entered the picture. In 2016, McFarlane released the first wave of the FNAF line, offering four sets. They may seem small at first glance, but they're all packed with a unique appeal. The show stage featuring the main three animatronics as buildable figures is a perfect example. A nice buildable location, but what set these apart were the stickers and soft goods. These added depth and authenticity to the experience. Next up was the office set, a recreation of the endgame office including Golden Freddy. McFarlane's team poured their hearts into making these sets, as true to the game as possible and that's clearly visible in all of their marketing for these. The third set brought Foxy and Pirate Cove to life, complete with a movable curtain for those peekaboo moments. And finally closing out the wave was the backstage, featuring damaged Sheikah and an exoskeleton. This is my least favorite of the bunch, but the most striking aspects of McFarlane's FNAF line is its attention to detail and texture. Unlike most LEGO sets, which always exude a certain aesthetic, McFarlane's sets are designed with a gritty in-game atmosphere in mind. These aren't just plastic bricks. They're more like collectible dioramas. And that is what McFarlane used to make these stand out in the world of construction toys. The second wave in 2016 expanded the FNAF world covering three locations and introducing microsets. The main locations were inspired by games 3 and 4, including the security office with Springtrap, the bed with Nightmare Freddy, and the closet with Nightmare Mangle. Each set was affordably priced, making them accessible to fans of the franchise. The micro sets added even more value. Retailing at just $8.99 each, these sets included characters like Nightmare, Balloon Boy, Toy Chica, Toy Bonnie, Phantom Foxy, and Phantom Freddy, with pleasing backdrops that went alongside the full location sets. Overall, it's a solid start for the FNAF line. Fast forward to 2017 and McFarlane launched Wave 3 with 5 location sets and 4 micro sets. Locations were mostly inspired by FNAF 2 and included parts and service with Wither Foxy, the game area with Balloon Boy and Mangle, the prize corner with the puppet, and the party room with Toy Freddy. Additionally, we also got a sister location set with the circus control that added circus baby to the mix. The micro sets again added more characters to the world now including Funtime Freddy with Spotlight Stage Right, Funtime Foxy with Spotlight Stage Left, RWQ with The Office Door, and Nightmare Chica with Right Hall Window. And these were a testament to McFarlane's efficiency. These managed to feel fresh even though they were the same characters over and over again. Strangely, we wouldn't get more sets throughout 2017. Wave 4 didn't arrive till February of 2018, mainly focusing on sister location. It featured three locations, the control module with Belora, the private room with Lolbit and Jumpscare, Funtime Freddy, and the scooping room with Enard. The microsets continue to add depth by including characters and backdrops like the office hallway with Phantom Balloon Boy, the left dresser with Foxy, the party wall with Damage Freddy, and the grandfather clock with Phantom Bonnie. Yet, it's hard to ignore the elephant in the room. These sets 
were just not selling. It's evident that the FNAF franchise was losing steam by this point. Interest had peaked and the fandom had started to wane. Despite the dedicated following, the disinterest was growing. The franchise's later games such as the fourth installment and sister locations lacked the iconic recognition the original trilogy had. And so having most sets be based on games 4 and 5 could be uninteresting to some fans. Enter the Classic series. The fall of 2018 reintroduced the first wave of sets, but with a twist. McFarlane addressed one of the line's most underutilized aspects that was the lack of connection and modularity. The Classic series aimed to give fans a second chance at getting the recognizable characters, and with the release of the West Hall playset, these sets could finally connect to each other in a way that is accurate to the game, allowing kids to recreate their favorite moments and build out the game's map. Wave 5 in 2019 saw again a smaller release with three location sets being the East Hall with Freddy and Chica, the Toy Stage, and the Office Desk from FNAF 2. You could sense a shift in the design philosophy behind these. Now the bigger sets focus more on play features and the rest of the wave was just micro sets. But they were now a little bit more expensive, ranging all the way from $9.99 to $14.99. So the once accessible line was becoming a bit pricier. By 2020, with the arrival of Wave 6, the FNAF line seemed to have run out of ideas. Recognition of the characters became difficult for casual fans, and the direction of the line appeared muddled. Should it focus on re-releases, remakes, or products for upcoming games? The franchise had become directionless, and 2021 passed without any new sets being released. But in 2022, a breath of fresh air finally came, with the release of FNAF Security Breach. This new game led fans to speculate about the line's possible return, only to receive disappointing news that the line was officially cancelled and would not return. So, what went wrong? While Five Nights at Freddy's initially enjoyed immense popularity, interest in the franchise began to wane over time. As new games were released, the series evolved, and the appeal of the games and merchandise declined. To put it in simpler terms, McFarlane found it challenging to sustain interest in their FNAF construction line year after year. We also got to consider the limited scope for creativity and the lack of features which made kids lose interest quickly. The rising prices didn't help either. Furthermore, there was an oversaturation of FNAF merchandise in the market, including figures, Funko Pops, plushies, and more, which also diluted the appeal. On top of that, piracy and knockoff merchandise probably also played a role in diminishing sales. It was just easier for parents to buy the knockoff character packs on AliExpress for their kids that than the officially licensed stuff, which was more expensive. Because at the end of the day, most young kids don't care if it's official or not. They just want to play with it. But considering the line's eventual demise, I now bring forward a question. What if McFarlane had persevered? What if they embraced the modular system and released FNAF security breach sets in 2022? With the rise of nostalgia for the brand, it's easy to imagine McFarlane's FNAF line making a strong comeback. There's a clear demand for the FNAF construction sets, as evident from discussions on Reddit and other forums. Those who missed out on the original sets now face sky-high prices on the secondary market, and to me, that showcases the line's unrealized potential. There's also another argument. Maybe McFarlane's line was destined to fail from the beginning. The construction toy market is cutthroat, and most of the time, finding an audience is hard, especially when most fans already have a preconceived bias towards non-LEGO brands, looking at them as clones or knockoffs. Even though most of the times, there is genuine passion and hard work behind these, but that's just how the industry works. In the end, McFarlane's FNAF construction line had a promising start, but couldn't keep up with the changing tides of the franchise. With the benefit of hindsight, it's clear that there is a hunger for the brand and the toy market, and let's hope one day another company takes a leap of faith and brings the world of Freddy Fazer's pizza to life. But hey, that's just my brick opinion. Thanks for watching and take care.